Deep in the heart of Landell, there is a clue for Tarnish to find, hidden in plain sight, that, if followed to its inevitable conclusion, will lead to a revelation so large, so staggering, that it will make you question everything you think you know about this world. No, not that secret, actually. Although, admittedly, the fact that Merica, the missing goddess of this world, and Radigan, her consort, the erstwhile Elden Lord, are the same person, hidden in this otherwise benign statue that changes forms when a certain incantation is cast nearby, is a pretty big secret to find. No, this secret is found at the base of the Erd Tree and requires no sorceries or incantations to reveal. It is on the massive carved stone relief that looms above every tarnished every time they approach the Elden Throne, over the course of their quest to sit upon it as Elden Lord. It is here above a jagged scar that acts as an entrance into the gargantuan golden glowing tree, known as the Erd Tree. Any tarnished traveling through the lands between will likely grow quite familiar with the sight of the Erd Tree towering on the horizon so big that it is visible from virtually anywhere above ground. But only when they've reached this place, so close to the Erd Tree for the very first time, that a tarnished might begin to glimpse the edges of the Erd Tree's true nature. It is here, above the scar in the stone, that eagle-eyed tarnished might have already spotted a progression of ascending images that, ostensibly, tells the history of the Elden Ring and the Erd Tree. In this history, the world more or less begins with the Elden Ring, which is a sort of a magical slash abstract concept that's either representative of or directly defines, through some magical means, the order of this world. The Elden Ring appears to be emerging out of, well, we can't see it too well what with the big old hole at the base of the card relief, but we could maybe call the hole itself the Crucible or chaos, or maybe even nothing. To reiterate, the story is, so far, out of this former crucible of chaos emerges the concept of order, the Elden Ring. Next in the story, it appears as if the Elden Ring provides enough order for a stable foundation, or maybe acts as a sort of anchor, which allows for the growth of the miraculous Erd Tree which eventually grows tall and blooms, leading to an age of abundance in the lands between, where life soon flourishes due to the glory and the power of the Erd Tree's sap, its grace. However, over time, the Erd Tree's abundance wanes, and its branches lose their previous splendor, leading to the current state in which the Tarnished finds the Erd Tree. At the very least, a little less lustrous than in previous days. That's the basic story, anyway, supported by the general narrative laid out in the descriptions of many items the Tarnished will inevitably find along their journey through the lands between. It's a good story, a strong story, but like many convenient truths, I think it might be a lie. Or, to put it in less combative terms, it's just one truth, maybe. Another, more compelling truth, in my opinion, the one that is hidden here in this carved stone relief, would only ever be seen by a tarnished if they happen to do something very unlikely. Not a sorcery, not an incantation, but some real magic. Abstract thinking. They simply need to flip the world upside down. Now, from this new perspective, a different story emerges. One that begins with... a mind. What only sort of appeared before to be a gnarled dying tree now appears, to my eyes at least, to better resemble a nervous system topped by a brain. This brain, this mind, then appears to possibly meet or experience a world outside of itself, with a tree and branches, 
And from that lived sensory experience, the mind grows the Erd tree, thus marking a customarily chaotic start to an internal, cognitive, mental realm that is known here as the Lands Between. Over time, as more and more of this internal world, this mental world that reflects and processes stimuli from the outside material world, is formed and defined by those stimuli, as well as by other lived experiences like memories, hopes, fears, dreams, traumas, genetic and cultural histories, intellectual and spiritual journeys. Out of that crucible called life, the Elden Ring is formed. A sense of self or one's internal order or chaos that is a reflection of external order or chaos. Now, I know, at this point many of you will be grumbling something about how I'm reading too much into things, making too many reaches. And viewer, or listener, I don't judge, I'd usually agree with you. If it was just this. But it isn't. Did you know that when you look at something, the lenses in your eye flip what you are seeing upside down? The brain then, somewhat miraculously, processes that flipped visual information fast enough so that by the time it reaches your conscious brain, it appears seamlessly as a right side up image. You could call that place, the place that that flipping happens, that fraction of a moment, that space between the external outer world and your internal conscious, subconscious and unconscious worlds, the lands between. After all, the Erd tree is the spitting image of an ocular nerve, wouldn't you say, buddy? Recently, I went to the eye doctor to get my glasses prescription updated and to pick up a new pair of spectacles, as my old ones were uh, not doing well. Uh, while I was there, I, I paid $30 for an eye scan. Now, at that point, I had already been well aware of the reality of the lens between as a mental realm for a long time before I even played the game. I did it because a twist I had been working into my own story, Floating World, for years before the first trailer for Elden Ring came out, which puts me in a unique position to recognize the art tree immediately as an ocular nerve. When I saw my eye scans, I smiled, <laughs> knowing it was just more to inevitably share. A very familiar shape to anyone with a lot of time spent exploring the lands between. The ocular nerve from this angle looks a lot like the golden centipede, the curse mark of death, and even, surprisingly, the game map itself. This is most apparent when viewing the map bare, without having collected any preconceived notions of the map, so to speak although I'm not sure if this is possible to achieve in the game normally. Viewing the map this way, like the scan of an eye, casts a much darker light over the inevitable spread of save points across the map, the sights of grace, as the tarnish progresses through the lands between. It would indicate a condition known as dry age-related macular degeneration which leads to a gradual loss of center of field vision and imperception of color as one ages and the macular degeneration spreads and worsens due to damage to the macula. The macula is part of the light sensitive tissue at the back of the eye called the retina. In the more common dry form of macular degeneration, tiny clumps of protein called drusen form under the retina, which appear as those yellow spots on an eye scan. Less common is wet macular degeneration, which is caused when abnormal blood vessels appear and grow under the retina, leaking and causing scarring to the macula. In this wet form, the deterioration of one's vision occurs much more rapidly, making it a much more serious and immediate threat than the slow creep of the dry form. 
While wet AMD might require fast treatment with a direct injection by needle into the eyeball of a certain cocktail of vitamins and minerals called the AREDS2 combination, the dry form can be slowed by taking a daily AREDS2 vitamin supplement, which doesn't require an eyeball needle. AREDS2 vitamins and minerals include vitamin C, vitamin E, lutein, zeaxanthin, zinc, and copper. I'd like to discuss the last two in relation to certain phenomena in the lands between. Zinc is a silvery gray brittle metal that, note, very easily tarnishes when exposed to air. It was probably named by the alchemist Paracelsus uh, from the German word zinca, which means a tooth or prong. When burned, it produces something called alchemist wool or zinc oxide, which was used in an early form of alloying brass with copper. <laughs> 